close your eyes and watch the breath. Try to notice where you feel the breathing process in the body. Allow your attention to settle there. Then see if you can keep it there. One good way of keeping it there is to adjust the breath so that it's comfortable. You can ask yourself what kind of breathing would feel good right now and see how the body responds. If it doesn't respond, you can consciously experiment. Longer, shorter, faster, slower, deeper, more shallow. See what meets the needs of the body right now. Because the breath is like free medicine. We go through life being wounded by all kinds of sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations coming in from the outside, and even more violently by our own greed, aversion, and delusion coming in from inside. So the mind needs some healing, and giving it a good place to stay, a good solid place to stay in the present moment is good medicine for the mind. Especially now that we're being assaulted by our screens. You walk down the street and see everybody looking at a screen all the time. You wonder why people don't get run into cars more often now. And the information that comes in the screen is of all kinds. It's designed to be enticing. It's designed to be getting your mind worked up. It's like those things they call natural flavors. They actually tweak the flavors so that they're more addictive. And so we're walking around with our little addictions all the time. And what comes in through those addictions is often very harmful for the mind. So the mind needs some time to be by itself, to disconnect from the rest of the world, to look after itself. Because even if we didn't have the screens, there'd still be greed, aversion, and delusion inside, and they'd find their ways to come out in our actions one way or another. So we've got to look after that. How can we prevent them from taking over the mind? How do we build up our resistance both inside and out? Well, giving the mind a good place to stay where it has a sense of ease and well-being right now, right here. That's one way of counteracting their power. Because often their power comes from the fact that you're feeling a lack, you're feeling tired, you're feeling wounded, you're feeling hungry, and you want something to take away the pain, even if it's just the pain of boredom. And so we go for whatever. Well, the Buddha is giving you something a lot better than whatever. He's giving you a good place to stay, where the mind can find a pleasure that's harmless and that doesn't have a bad impact on it. In other words, you don't have to do any bad karma to gain this pleasure. and. The mind itself is actually clearer by pursuing this kind of pleasure. You, it begins to understand itself a lot better and understand the ins and outs of all the tricks of the defilements. That way it can come out unscarred. It's not scarred by things outside, not scarred by things inside, because it knows how, still, knows how to look after itself. So give the mind some time to be with the breath, because that's the first step in healing the mind, giving it a good place to rest. Developing its mindfulness, developing its alertness. So it can begin to look after itself and make sure that its health stays strong. <laughs>